Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. Now, if, like me, you spend a fair bit of time looking at cbpreference.com to see, well, what the current language standard situation is and what compilers have implemented what thing, then you may be coming across things like this little gem right here that says consistent container erasure. And you may be wondering what exactly that refers to. Now, I became aware of this back in like the C17 timeframe, I believe, and I expected it to be accepted back then, and it wasn't, unfortunately. But it was accepted here for C20, and it has been implemented by both GCC and Clang standard libraries. So, what does it mean? I will demonstrate. Now, we're back here in our Compiler Explorer window, as usual, and let's just say we want to write a quick function that, um, let's see, how do we want to do this? So, we want to take in a vector, and we want to remove all of the fives from the vector. Now, if you've been using C++ for any amount of time with the standard library and the standard containers, you're probably used to this remove erase idiom. And it goes something like this. We want to remove the items in the range of all of the items of the vector that are equal to 5. And this compiled, even though it probably shouldn't have, because we didn't include the algorithm header. Now, what did this remove do? This remove didn't actually remove anything. What it did is it swapped everything that is equal to 5 to the end of the container. And if we want to actually erase it, we now have to say... that we want to remove everything from the iterator that this is returned. Well, that is erase everything from the iterator that this is returned until the end of the vector. And sometimes when you're writing code like this, you just kind of want to be like, why? But it comes down to the composability and reusability of the standard algorithms and the standard containers. Standard containers are sets of iterators of things, basically. I mean, well, they're not sets of iterators, but they are things that can be accessed via iterators. That's what all standard containers are. So this consistency is pretty cool that we can use these algorithms to swap everything to the end of the vector and then say, no, I want to actually erase those, but it's arguably poorly uh, named. So for C20, we have gotten a new algorithm. And we can finally do something like this. We would expect this to compile. But it doesn't work necessarily as we would expect, because this is actually a free function that works on the entire container. So we do something like this now. We say we want to erase everything from the vector that is equal to 5. It's interesting design decision that this does not work with pairs of iterators, as uh, most of the algorithms do. But it works on containers. Now, Part of what makes this particularly interesting is we can do this with any container that we are given as well. And that uh, is helpful because not all of the containers provide the same kind of erase function. So with this, we've got the uniform ability to erase anything from a container that we can like this. So this version is taking the value and just like remove there is also an erase if. And if you go, uh, that's not going to compile because that's going to want something that's callable, a predicate. So um, we'll just move on past that. So you can use this with any container and you can use it consistently and um, this should really help with generic code and it's also quite a bit 
less wordy than the old version, but if you go and look at the standard, it is actually defined as being equivalent to doing that. So here you go, one more feature that we are getting from C++20 that hopefully will make some of our code a little bit easier to write and maintain and to get correct. So thanks for watching this episode. Uh, be sure to subscribe.